Please join us in singing hymn number 525, The Strife is Holy. Hymn number 525. <clears throat>
trying to come with the human race, and last of all, through water which Christ gave holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the fact of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, 
You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you will see and hear. The word of the Lord. A 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time to you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! 
Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this third Sunday of Easter, we remember and celebrate our Lord's resurrection with yet another account of what transpired on that third day after his death. At the Easter Vigil Mass, we heard the account of the resurrection from St. Matthew's Gospel, whereby Mary Magdalene got to the tomb before sunrise and experienced an earthquake during which an angel rolled back the stone from the entrance and announced that Jesus was not there, that he was resurrected. Jesus then greeted Mary and her companion on their way back to the apostles. How glorious that moment was when those women embraced the feet of the risen Jesus as he said, do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. On the second Sunday of Easter last week, we heard the account from St. John's Gospel of Jesus appearing to the apostles later in the evening. How glorious it was when the risen Jesus came through locked doors and stood in their midst with the greeting, Peace be with you. Although it seemed unbelievable, they believed and rejoiced when they saw the Lord. That is, all except for Thomas, who missed Jesus' appearance and asserted, only seeing and feeling Jesus' wounds would convince him, which happened a week later. On this third Sunday of Easter, we hear the account from St. Luke's Gospel of Jesus appearing to Cleopas and his wife that afternoon while walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. They were debating and pondering over the events that transpired with Jesus that led to what we know today as the Paschal Mystery, his passion, death, and resurrection. They were enthralled with this stranger 
who opened the scriptures to them, so much so that they wanted him to stay and to dine with them. And Jesus did. But only until he revealed himself to them in the blessing and breaking of the bread with them. This act of Jesus, which we commemorate in the celebration of the Eucharist at each Mass, opened their eyes and their minds to recognize Jesus as being alive, as being risen from the dead, as being resurrected. How glorious that moment was, after which one of those disciples asked, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? As they returned to Jerusalem to tell other members of their group and the 11 apostles about their exhilarating encounter with the risen Jesus. In modern times, scriptures are opened up to us in various ways. For example, Bible scholars, professors, theologians, bishops, priests, preachers, Bible studies and workshops, proclamation of the Gospels, etc. It just so happens that when I was a child back in the day, Bishop Fulton J. Sheen had a weekly television program called Life is Worth Living, in which he opened up the scriptures and the teachings of the Catholic Church. My family was among the estimated 30 million people who watched it on black and white TV and later in living color every Tuesday night. This year, I have the opportunity to listen to audio recordings and study Bishop Sheen's Christian philosophy. And during a lesson on miracles, he mentioned that all of the miracles that Jesus did, the resurrection was the most important miracle. And while he expounded on the various aspects of the resurrection, one thing hit me like a ton of bricks when he explained all the trouble that the Jewish authorities went through to post guards at the tomb, to seal the tomb, and to have certificates of death signed by the enemies themselves. When Bishop Sheen said, and I quote, the enemies of Christ expected his resurrection but his friends did not. It was the believers who were the skeptics. It was the unbelievers who were credulous. His followers needed and demanded proof before they would be convinced. Believe me, the skeptics of today cannot compare with the skeptics of those days, namely the apostles. They were the doubters. Unquote. And this is so true, isn't it? Mary Magdalene went to the tomb expecting to find a corpse. When she told the apostles that Jesus had risen, Peter and John ran to the tomb to see and didn't really believe until Jesus appeared to them. Thomas didn't believe until Jesus appeared and invited him to touch his wounds. And Thomas expressed his belief, my Lord and my God. Cleopas and his wife were confused and downcast during their walk to Emmaus, but expressed their beliefs after Jesus walked with them and later broke bread with them. Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us. We heard in the reading from the book of Acts, Peter's proclamation to the Jews of Jesus's purpose and mission on earth. 
per the plan of God, whereby Jesus was delivered up to them, and they killed him by crucifixion. Yet death could not contain Jesus, who gloriously rose from the dead and who is exalted at God's right hand. And in the second reading from the first letter of Peter, we are told that we were ransomed by the precious blood of the unblemished Lamb, Jesus Christ. It is through Jesus that our faith and hope are in God. Certainly, this gospel, as well as those of the previous Sundays of Easter, speak to us of faith and hope, virtues we need to strengthen now when we, the members of the mystical body of Christ, are physically separated, isolated, and surrounded by illness and death. Yet we are not separated from the love of God because Jesus assured us he is always with us. The encounter of Jesus bringing the scriptures to life for those two disciples on the walk to Emmaus changed them from being downcast to having burning hearts. In your encounter with Jesus, knowing that he is truly the Messiah, our Lord and Savior, may your hearts burn with love and burst with joy over his resurrection, which we celebrate throughout this Easter season. Rejoice! He is risen! Alleluia! I leave you with this beautiful prayer, the Regina Celli. Queen of heaven, rejoice, alleluia. For he whom you did merit to bear, alleluia, has risen as he said, alleluia. Pray for us to God, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, alleluia. For the Lord has truly risen, alleluia. Let us pray, O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant, we beseech thee, that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Like David, we abide with confidence in the Lord, for we trust that God will never abandon us. Therefore, we address God with these, our needs, and the needs of all. For the Church, that like the early disciples, we may testify sincerely to Christ's power over sin and death, and his promise of salvation to all humanity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office, that they may empathize with those whom they serve, especially those who are the least well-off and most vulnerable, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are impacted by the coronavirus epidemic, for the sick and all who have died, for the safety of health care workers and those who care for the ailing, for the consolation of those who cannot leave their homes, and for the encouragement of all who feel anxiety and fear during this crisis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farm, farmers and farm workers who plant the seeds and tend the seedlings that will grow and bear fruit, that will nourish and delight us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who have been or will be baptized during this Easter season, that they may be outward signs of the faith of their families, friends, and communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of our brothers and sisters in Christ who have died, especially Teresa Demmer and Frank Coy, may they rejoice in the presence of our Heavenly Father. We pray Lord, hear our prayers. We also include in our prayers the intentions that were for our Sunday Masses. And they include Guillermo Shaw, Norris Fuentes, John Norm, Fritz Wires, David G. Rocha, and Billy Compton. We also include all of our intentions, those who are present here in our community of worship at this time, those of you at home who are praying with us, and all of those intentions that have been called into us, we want to remind you that you are in our prayers during this time. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and love, help us to spread your mercy and love to all those we meet. Hear the prayers we make to you today and grant them, we pray, through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing in number 527, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, number 527.
pray my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted, and I'll be all my own thought. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name. For our good and all sisters. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true man who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with past and joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we sing. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Lord, 
and coming, we offer you with thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Joseph, St. Martin the Evangelist, with all the saints and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing in the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm the faith and charity. Your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis of Paul, Gustavo and Michael our bishops, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire kingdom you have gained to your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all who will children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us offer each other a sign of
Please join us in singing hymn number 918, In the Breaking of the Bread, number 918. <laughs> Most 
judgment, glorious and heavenly standard our liturgical heaven when we rejoice in the risen Christ. But this time it is tinged with sadness and sorrow and pain, with feelings of separation and suffering. And we want to reassure you that we are indeed aware of that, aware of everything that is happening in our parish community, in our local community, in our city, in our state and our country, that you are in our prayers. And we invite you each day to walk with us in prayers and celebrate the Eucharist, but especially on Sundays, as we make that intent to gather with you in prayer and to celebrate the risen Christ in our midst during this season. Please keep in touch with us through Facebook and through our website, and our bulletin, and the information that is being sent out to you today. We want to know any of your needs, and any prayer intentions you might have. Please let us know so that they can be included in our collective prayer each time we gather together through this meeting. God bless you, and we hope to see each other soon. Please join me in praying prayer to our Lady of Guadalupe. Our Lady of Guadalupe, in these times of tribulation, we turn to you, O Mother, see with compassion the suffering of your most beloved sons and daughters, affected by the coronavirus pandemic throughout the entire world. Ask your sons to have mercy on us, bring in healing to those affected, and protection to all of your children. Jesus Christ, Savior of all people, grant us courage to come to you and care for the entire world in the way of sorrow and uncertainty. We seek refuge in you, and according to your promise, deliver us from this danger. Amen. St. Anthony and Catherine, pray for us. St. Martin the Evangelist, pray for us. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. Please join us in singing hymn number 537, Easter Alleluia. 